In today's Heart of Poland, we talk to somebody who spent pretty much their entire life under the camera's glare. Presenter, musician, businesswoman, you name it, Patrycja Kazadi has done it. We'll talk to her about her life growing up in Poland, the product of a mixed race relationship, the challenges she's had to overcome, and some of her greatest moments too. Now, let's roll with the intro. Patricia, welcome to the studio. Welcome to Heart of Poland. I am so excited to have you here. Oh, thank you. I'm excited as well. Um, right, so researching you is kind of hard because it's like you've got businesswoman, you've got presenter, you've got musician, a songwriter. I probably missed off a couple there. What no, did I miss off? it didn't. <laughs> Which one of those words describes you best? Um, I think just me, just me being me, you know. I, I'm an entertainer. I always wanted to be an entertainer since I was a very little girl. I've been doing this for a very long time. I don't want to say how long. <laughs> <laughs> but more than 20 years so it's been a minute and you know I always just wanted to make people happy make them entertain it always gave me a lot of joy to see my grandmother or my mother laughing so I would do like little shows at home sell little tickets for one's lottie that I would make myself <laughs> out of paper and I just you know I just find joy in just performing in however you know whatever field and music is probably the most important for me. Music is from all of my other, you know, fields I grew from because um, it started with music. But, but I like to do other stuff as well. When you're on stage and you've got an audience in front of you and there's that adrenaline and pressure, yeah. what does it feel like for you? It depends. If I'm performing like as an artist, just musician and, and singer, I get very, very stressed. I think it's because, like I said, it's the most important field for me and it comes straight from my heart and I feel very vulnerable and bare in front of people like kind of naked you know emotionally so I get very very stressed and if I don't feel comfortable on stage for whatever reason whether I see the audience is not really feeling it or I'm just not comfortable or you know the sound is not right I get really really like stressed to a point where my legs are shaking I can sing my throat is like really tight um, so this adrenaline and stress before my performances when it comes to music kind of cuts my wings, you know. But when it comes to TV, um, I like the adrenaline. It gives me like more boost, like I, I feel like, um, like I'm about to run in a race or like I'm a <laughs> Formula One driver and I know like I'm going to get there and I'm just going to kill it. So it's a completely different energy. You've been uh, having auditions and, you know, going and presenting all sorts of things over, over as you say, two decades. And, uh, I wonder, does it ever get kind of samey-samey, a little bit boring after a while, like another day in the office? Because, you know, the pressure, you know, it's huge, big TV presenting roles at a very young age. See, that's why, like, people often ask me, like, why do you do so many things? Like, what was I supposed to do for such a long time? Like, can you imagine for 20 years and more, doing every day the same thing like I would die of boredom especially being a young person I think when you're already an adult and you have other things like family kids you can do a steady job you know but if you're just growing and becoming first a teenager then a young woman then a real woman you know through heartbreaks and other things like you your head spreads like your your thoughts are different and and you have different needs also as an artist. So I was trying different things because of that, you know. And I never got bored because I was trying different things and doing, you know, acting, hosting, producing, writing, um, now having my, you know, skin uh, company, beauty, uh, beauty lines. Um, this is really exciting for me. When people live uh, with so much adrenaline in their life, because as you say, every performance, you know, there, there's some pressure there, normal life can be quite boring. Is that the case for you? No, actually, you know, I've worked so much and so hard when I was younger that now I got to a point where I want to live, just live, you know? <laughs> so two years ago, I took a little break from TV and I had a meeting with my boss and I told him that I just need some inspirational time to where I can travel and just not think about another shoot, another work project and just focus on finding more me. What, what are my needs? Like, you know, more inspiration for my writing. Like I, I didn't write songs for over three years and I felt very, you know, sad about it. Like I think, 
as long as I have my music, I can do other stuff. And if I don't have my music, I feel just not happy. Yeah. So I needed that break. And a lot of people were wondering where I went, like um, whether just my career collapsed or something, or that I don't have any other job opportunities. It was just me needing this time off. And now I'm back and I'm back with new energy, new ideas, and I feel stronger than ever. That's usually how you can tell a true artist rather than someone who's just doing it for the money is the, there's a creativity and the creative yeah, drive. Yeah, I'm not doing it for the money. Yeah. I never was. And, you know, it started from passion, from love for what I do, and I never want to lose it. So whenever I feel like I felt two years ago that I'm becoming like blasé, like just, ugh, I got to do it, you know, then I feel like I'm ungrateful. I have a wonderful life. I have a wonderful career and job. And I should appreciate every day going to set rather than being miserable and I have to do it. Wow. And, and I needed that break. I have no idea. Miserable on set? No, never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> right, now we're going to do the traditional heart of Parliament thing where you bring on your personal item which reflects yes. on your life. And ladies and gentlemen, it's kind of exciting because we're going to break another heart of Parliament rule. I'm going to invite Michal onto stage because he's got Patricia's special item, <laughs> Thank which is you. a little bit too large to hold. I know. So this is not me being vain or anything. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, my pictures. <laughs> no. Um, actually, this is one of the most wonderful wonderful experiences in my life, which was the role of um, Rary in the movie Bodo. Um, this movie was about, you know, um, just the movie industry in Poland in the 1930s and 40s. And it was about Eugeniusz Bodo, who was like our biggest star, um, who even like had offers from Hollywood. And um, I just thought to bring it because I got it from the crew. Um, from the whole beauty crew on the set and it brings me like a lot of memories that are very positive for me but also gives me inspiration to always work on projects that I feel very connected to and this one was like that. And this was in 2016 yeah? Yeah this was in 2016. Was it your first feature film? It wasn't my first feature film but it was my I would say biggest role but also the most important one where I could finally, you know, sing, dance, perform, but I had like something really to act because she was going through alcoholism, through depression, and I had to display all her emotions through being a very young girl who was just experiencing life to a woman that was that went through hell. And, and who was the character you were playing? That's Rari. Um, she was from Tahiti. She was a Hollywood actress. Um, she performed in movies all over the world and in cabarets and all of that type of stuff. And then she met Eugeniusz Boda and fell in love with him. He was her one and only love till the day she died. Ooh, yeah. That sounds like a film worth watching in yeah. that case. Yeah, you, you should watch it. If you didn't watch it, please watch it. It's very wonderful. And that is Bodo, which is B-O-D-O. D-O, D -O. O. yeah. Okay, so yeah. for our English language viewers, I yeah. hope there's some subtitles. So that's right. very. <laughs> yeah. It was funny also because I was fully, fully, fully bold. My head was fully shaved. It was really shaved up. I like that look, by the way. Yeah, you did? Yeah. I loved it, honestly. I loved it. Um, I felt so strong and, and sexy and feminine, you know, which is crazy because usually the hair gives you that. Um, I think it's because, because I didn't have the hair. I had to find those strengths in me. Yes. You know? Um, because hair is so associated mm -hmm. w w with women and beauty, yeah. etc. It's yeah. actually a, it's a sign of strength of character yeah. uh, as much as anything. But let's go back a little bit then. You uh, are, uh, your father was born in the DRC yeah. and your mother was born in Poland. Yeah. Um, so you're one of, I would say, very few mixed race relationships, especially in, in, in those days in yeah. Poland. How did your parents meet? Um, my dad came from Congo for a scholarship. Um, he was... Um, studying in Politechnika Warszawska, but he didn't know Polish. Um, so they sent him for one year to Lublin to learn Polish um, and prepare him for the studies. And my mom was studying there, um, I don't know how to call it in English. I would say like something connected with music, like she was playing the piano and she was singing in a choir. So she, oh, like musical education, like she was supposed to be a teacher, like a music teacher for kids from one, two, three. Um, from grades to one to three, I mean, yes. <laughs> not one to three. <laughs> no, <laughs> that would be interesting. Um, so, yeah, so they met. On the first day, my dad got there. He saw her, like, walking the stairs from upstairs, and he said, that's going to be my wife. Oh. And she was like, nope. <laughs> 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 and then after months of pursuing her, they became a couple, and they've been together for 30 
five years. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, would, how did they describe those early years? I mean, did your mum's family, you know, were they, were they okay with it? Uh, it's quite um, an unusual thing at that time. Yeah, my mum's family, strangely, was okay with it because, you know, they were from a little town. So usually you would expect, like, you know, at least a little bit of worry or, or whatever because it's something new. You're, like, you know, you're not exposed to that before. Um, but no, my, my grandmother always loved my dad and she accepted him fully. But obviously the neighbors had a lot of comments and, and it was new, so they didn't know how to react. The only thing I can say is my dad was always very funny about it. Like whenever people would be, I don't want to even call them racist because I think they were just ignorant. Like they didn't know or they were scared. Um, Till this day, I, I must say, I've never experienced racism in my country, um, but I hear of it. I hear of it from other kids, um, because when I was hosting You Can Dance, a lot of kids would come and they were like, you know, you're our inspiration, like you give us so much strength because it's so hard. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get it like that. Of course, I had comments like, oh, this or that. They called me names, but it was never like, you know, aggressive or, or, or to a point where I would feel bad about it. Yes. Um, my that's that's going to surprise people, I think. Yeah. Most people have this certain perception of how it yeah, especially was back it. in the day. Never had it, even though I was one of the first ones. Uh, you know, my mom even said, made a comment recently. We were in this dancing school, and she was like, "Oh my God, it's so you know amazing to see so many mulattoes." Like, when I was bringing you to dancing school, you were the only one. You know, now it's so many of them. So she, I can see in her heart, like she's like so happy that the times has had changed. Um, my dad was always funny about it. If someone was calling him names, he would be like, yeah, be careful, because if you turn off the light, he won't see me, or, you know, whatever, <laughs> just, just to make it more, like, funny. And then people out of the sudden are not racist, they're laughing, they're making connection, and they, then he meets new friends, you know? So that's why I'm saying, like, a lot of people are not racist, they're just, you know... Do, do not, you've you've broken a number of sort of barriers. Uh, I think you were the first ever mixed race person on a Polish magazine yes. cover, uh, yeah. first to appear as a pre major presenter on an evening show. Yes. Does it sometimes feel like a bit of a burden? I feel, you know, I don't think about it that much, but my friends who are half black or black living here in, in Poland um, always remind me this. Like, they're like, yo, you, 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 you made history. Like, thanks to you, we can do this. Thanks to you, we can do that. And I'm like, wow, it, it is true, but I don't really live up, like every day like, oh, I did this. You know what I mean? Like, I never <laughs> think about it. But it makes me very, very happy to turn on TV and see another half black host. It makes me very happy to see half black actresses and to see my other girlfriends from the industry who are on the magazine covers. It was very hard for me on that level. Like, like I said, I never felt racism, but it was hard to break those boundaries. I remember going to auditions and hearing, you will never perform in this TV series because it's a Polish TV series. And I was like seven and I was like, but I am Polish. And they're mm. like, yeah, but you're black. You know, so I would always hear those types of things or, you know, Patricia, you're really cool, but you can never be on a Polish magazine cover. And I'm like, why? Like, I am already doing these, this, this, this. Yeah, but you're black, you know? And it only gave me like boost to push, you know, harder, to work harder, to prove them wrong. And with each step, I felt stronger in that, that there's no boundaries. If you're doing your job correctly and you're working really hard, you can get anywhere, no matter how you look, where you're from, where your orientation is, or whatever. Let's go back to your first breakthrough moment yeah. then. When was it? And it was at a very young age. Yeah, um, my first TV appearance was when I was three years old, but I was like just a little you know, something. But I think the breaking point was when I was 15 and um, I got a main role in this TV series on, um, on this TV station. Um, and honestly, till this day, I always, in my interviews, thank the director of this TV series for believing in me. My issue was because of having so many struggles to finally make it and I saw all my other girlfriends making it like we would see each other on auditions and each one of them finally would have their break have their break and I would never and I was like what the hell like what's wrong with me so you know insecurities kicked in then you start becoming a little teenager so then you're insecure about your body then I couldn't really find myself because when I was going to school 
I felt like I'm white because everybody else was white. But then I would go out of school and people would call me names and I'd be like, oh, I'm not white, you know? Then I would go home and I'm mostly raised with my mom and grandmother who are white. So I'm like, I'm white, I am part of you. But then I would go out and someone would call me names and I'll be like, who am I? I couldn't find myself, you know? I couldn't find my identity and I felt, I, I couldn't understand why I look different, but I feel the same like all my other friends. So that led me to certain, you know, behaviors that I would close myself inside. And I would go to auditions and I would see the red light in the camera and I would just, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. But then when I was home, I could perform my ass off, you know? So I was like, what, what am I supposed to do? And maybe this is not for, for me. And my dad always was like, you're, this, you're never gonna make it, you're never gonna make it because he Because wanted, he didn't want you to be. No, he wanted me to be either a, you know, a doctor or a lawyer. Anything less was unacceptable. So I was doing great at school. I was a super nerd um, for him mostly. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I was the firstborn, so the expectations were humongous. And he, he, you know, he said, you can dance or sing like in the afternoon, but I, this is not, this, this, you're not going to do this. So I had to move out of my house and just really pursue my dreams. But before that, I went to that audition. And again, I saw the red light and I was just like, uh, 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 uh. and the director was like, I see something in this girl. One more time. Just this time, forget we're here. And am I right in thinking it was something to do with eating? Say again? Was it something, eating something? Yes, that, she yeah? gave me grapes that she was eating actually at the time. And she was like, take these grapes and eat them while you're performing so that you can just relax and forget we're even here. So I did the scene again and I left the room and I was like, yo, this is over. I, I'm not doing this anymore. Like I'm not made for this. I don't have the strength, the power. Like I don't have the personality. And, and they called me back three or four months later I was like, I already forgot about that audition. I already focused on my school. I was like, I'm going to go to Stanford. I'm going to just get a scholarship or something and just be a nerd for my whole life. And they called me and they said, um, it took us so long because we were writing the script because the script was for a blonde white girl and we had to rewrite it. And yeah, do you want to get the role? And I'm like, uh, yes, <laughs> you know, and that, that, that began everything. So. Whenever I think about it, I'm the most grateful for that opportunity. And Teresa Kotlarczyk is, is my mogul. We're She's my queen. Officially thank you. See, Patricia, what I find very interesting about you is there is a certain vulnerability to you, and you're quite open about it. It's, yeah. it, it's quite unusual amongst people at your level. They tend to need to feel like, to project a kind of like, I'm excellent at everything, and yeah. I never had any self-doubt, and I've always known. Uh, do, do you feel that way about yourself? Um, not at all. I think I'm still that little nerd, uh, insecure girl. Um, I'm grateful that I can make my dreams reality and I work really hard and I worked really hard to boost my self-esteem a little better and create this outer ego that gets me on stage because if I was just me, Patricia, I would never go on stage. I would be so terrified I would collapse on the stairs. So I needed to create this lion lioness Kazadi <laughs> who comes out and just like ah, takes the stage um, but I am very open and also thanks to Instagram honestly about who I am really uh, and those two personas are me like I, I have this outlet to you know perform and just get out there but I'm still me as well vulnerable dealing with you know insecurities trying to find self-love and accepting of my body, of myself, and embracing all my, you know, all my flaws, I think, and, and sharing them with people. And, and I always did, and I did it through music. Now I do it also through my Instagram and connecting with people. I saw a very interesting interview on For Fun uh, TV, which you did recently, where you were chucking. Oh my God, uh, so yeah, that was so much fun. Really, I'd love to do that uh, on this yeah. show, but we're a bit too far away from so each other. so much fun. <laughs> it looked like you are having fun. And you were talking about uh, the complex that Polish women have yeah. in comparison to other countries. Yeah. Can you just outline what you meant then? I meant, you know, I remember the first time I went to the States and I was like, you know, super insecure and very aware of like, like, Oh, I have a little bit of cell light. There's a little stretch mark right here. Oh, this is not very flattering for my body. Like, that's how I was raised. Like, don't show up too much leg. Like, you're a little fat, so don't show up your stomach. Like, that's how, that's how we talk here in Poland. In the States, people just wear whatever they want to wear and whatever makes them comfortable. So when I went on the streets and I saw in New York, like, it was summer, girls with, like, 
legs like this, like ass like this, you know, and little shorts. And they were like killing it. And I was like, what is this life, you know? And I still don't have it. I'm still learning to accept my body and love myself and accept the things that I can change. Because of course you can get in the gym and kill yourself for a perfect body. But if you're not going to love yourself, that's not going to help anything. Like you got to first find a peace in yourself and, and love for yourself before all of that. And I'm still working on it. And I, I'm going to actually, one day I want to write a book about it because I, I think I've been through all the phases. And I also, as a young girl, uh, was exposed to so much hatred um, online um, via pictures that were very unflattering. And I remember the day um, I was 17 or 18 when it came out and it was on covers of all magazines, like very unflattering picture of me. That was not even fully true. It was also altered by Photoshop to make it more like terrible. And I remember I didn't leave my house for two weeks. I, 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 as a young girl, you cannot even imagine what can do that, what mm. that can do to your head and to your self-esteem. And I want to share that. I want to, I want to let girls know that it's, it's really tough sometimes, but it's very important to rebuild and to love yourself. You know. Let's talk about Poland. Uh, you're very proudly patriotic, as yeah. many Poles are. What do you love most about Poland? Um. You know, all countries and all nations have their flaws, and I don't want to um, pretend like we're perfect. But what I love about us is the traditionalism. Um, I love that the mothers are raising their daughters to be, you know, empathetic, loving, caring. Um, I love that when I visit people outside of big cities, they're always so welcoming. Like. You get there and it's like a whole table of food and it's like, you feel like at home. And I love that about us. I love, um, you know, the empathy, honestly, because when I lived in the States, that's what I was lacking the most. I think people there are raised more, you know, success and career oriented. And sometimes they get in the way of relationships or friendships. Here, relationship and friendship is usually priority. Now it's changing a little bit with time. But the way I was raised, um, I appreciate that about my family a lot. Mm. Favorite place in Poland? Favorite place? Um, I have so many, but right now probably Zakopane. <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to say that. Really? Why? Yeah, for the skiing, is it? or just? Uh... Yeah, yeah, I actually snowboard, but honestly, I just love Ostipek. That's the <laughs> so tell, tell our viewers what Ostipek is. Ostipek is like a grilled cheese. Um, it's, it's a... Grilled cheese. Grilled cheese. cheese. Like smoky yeah, yeah. It's and if you watched our Christmas uh, episode of Heart of Poland, you would have seen me try and eat a sipic. Oh, yeah? Uh, Did you two. like it? it? Do you know what? It's surprisingly difficult to eat on camera. Oh, yeah, because it's chewy. Because <laughs> it's super chewy. It's so so you try good. and eat it while it's Oh, man. Wanna... And, it, and it was cold, and it was the perfect conditions because it was snowy and yes. cold. And, yeah. and like uh, warm wine. That was very nice. Afterwards, we had smallets as well, which is also surprisingly uh, yeah. hard to eat on, on top. Um, I want to give you as a sense of just how much TV work you've done, because <laughs> I don't think we've we talked too much about it. I mean, you've, you've presented so many top shows. What was your favorite one? Oh, my God. I think my favorite was You Can Dance, honestly, because that was my first primetime show. So, of course, that's like the most exciting, but also because the production team was so, so loving, supporting and so much fun. Until this day, I call my producers like my, you know, TV dads because, you know, I was very <laughs> young. So they, they were like my uncle's dads, whatever. Um, and they took such good care of me and they gave me f huge, huge platform to just be me. Like I was not con controlled, tamed, and I could connect with the dancers and just be fully honest I think um, that's also what kind of like you know generated my career it was that, that I was not like a typical host I was more like a friend and even me crying on air or whatever with the contestants usually you don't see that that's not really I don't know if that's I don't know. you don't do that no. <laughs> and I didn't care I just did <laughs> what I felt was right to support my contestants and stand behind them and we traveled the world, it was so much fun, so many great choreographers, dancers. I just love being around creative people. So I think You Can Dance was my favorite, but I've done a lot of different shows throughout the years. I've been in TVN for um, six, 15, 16 years. 
Yeah. So it's a very long time. It is a very, very long time yeah. and you have literally done everything, uh, so many different programmes. You're focusing on your music at the moment. You've got an album coming out this year? Yeah, I'm working in the studio right now with producers from Poland and the States. Um, it's going to be my third album. Um, so I'm really, really excited. And this one is going to be positive, but it's going to be inspirational for sure. It, we're going to have a lot of live instruments from, you know, guitar, bass to drums, sets, and everything's going to be live. Um, very organic, um, kind of like a little bit of what I wanted to do my whole life, but I was never, you know, it was never possible. So I want to get back to their roots. Yeah. So you're going to have a soulful Lenny Kravitz type of vibe. Okay, and I highly recommend Patricia's music, which is under your, Kazadi is the, is the name of your yeah. channel on YouTube, yeah. so you can find it. They're insanely catchy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. And thank you're you. also a businesswoman, as I mentioned at the start. You've got your own skincare uh, uh, range as well. Let's talk about how, how, that, how that's come along over the years. Um, I'm super, super happy about it because I've been wanting to do that my entire life. Also because when I started in the business, there was no, you know, cosmetics for my skin color. So it was really hard to get a foundation for me. So usually I had to light foundation. So when you see my old pictures, I look <laughs> not bueno. <laughs> so that's, that's, that always was in my mind. Like whenever I become, you know, successful and I will have the opportunity, I want to have my own beauty line. So throughout the years we were, you know, um, talking about it with other brands, but I never decided to do it because I wanted to do my own lines. I didn't want to just have I didn't want to just get the money and be the face um, because like we talked before, I don't do this for the money. Of course, yes, this is my job, so obviously I make money, but this is not what kind of motivates me and drives me. Um, so I chose a brand that is fully Polish, that is, you know, um, not tested on animals, doesn't have any SLSs or any, you know, chemicals that are destructive to your body or skin. Um, and. And yeah, I'm excited because I'm not representing a brand from abroad. I'm representing a Polish brand and hopefully outside. We're working right now not only on online sales, but also on international sales. So my dream is to get to Germany, France and the States and UK. So I'm really, really excited. My line, um, my first line was for Otten and it came out last year. And then in March, we're having another line coming up and then another line and we'll see. I can see the smile on your face just getting wider as you talk about this project. So yeah. it obviously is, is bringing yeah. you a lot of joy. As well. Yeah, it brings me a lot of joy. It's kind of like a dream come true for any girl, I guess, because you can go to the factory and just be like, mm, I would love this <laughs> next, you know, and they're like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so I choose the colors, I choose, you know, the uh, formulations, I make sure that all is really well pigmented. So you don't have an issue where you go to the store and you see something and then you put it on yourself and it doesn't match what you saw. So I'm really on it. And you know, being in the industry for so long, I know everything about makeup. Like I've been, you know, I've been a makeup girl for a long, long time. I, I think I had all possible hairstyles and all possible makeups. So I know which products are good for your skin and which give you the best results too. Patricia, you're doing so much. Uh, I think I can safely say that your career is going to go in very interesting places over the course of the next so. 10 to 20 years. Since this program will almost certainly still be going in 10 years' time, I'm now going to invite you formally to come back and we'll do a little review in, yes. in 2020. Uh, no, it'll be 2029. 20, 20, oh my God, that seems yeah, like a long way. It sounds way. really like Does, a long it? time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's going to be cameras anymore. We're going to be flying. On You're still going to look great. I don't know exactly how it's going to pan oh, out in my you. case, uh, but I'm certainly looking forward to it. Thank you very much for your thank honesty, you. for your vulnerability and for your story uh, as you. well. Thanks so much. Don't forget to watch uh, this episode of Heart Opponent and share it wherever you find it, be it Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. Who knows where the uh, social media platforms of 2029 will be. Make sure you send this on to anyone who's interested in the story of an extraordinary woman who's achieved an extraordinarily uh, large amount ever since an extraordinarily young age. And we'll see you next time for the next episode of Heart Opponent.